I think you can see clearly here how wavy are the floors. They go in a little down on the left side. I didn't dream about that, but uh, I always wanted to figure it out how to do it. So hopefully, yeah, it'll be a good time. Because <laughs> I don't have any other choice. <laughs> One of my latest projects was the property one block away from the beach, staying on about two and a half feet height crawl space. Because the property is right by the ocean, obviously the purpose of crawl space is to raise the house to protect it from flood. Even without being close to raising water, you can meet a lot of houses with crawl space for a variety of reasons such as utilities accessibility and cost to build the house itself. And the older the house, the more likely you will see floors are getting wavy and unlevel. When we started remodeling, after removing carpet, I could easily notice that my property had the same issue and obviously I wanted to fix it. Little disclaimer, this video is not about step-by-step -step operation how to lift up your floors, but more about the mistakes you're gonna or might make if you do it yourself. I was extremely excited to try to do this work, but it was first time in my life without any professional advice. And obviously I was making mistake after mistake after mistake. I ended up partnering aka hiring my contractor friend to help me out, so I don't want to take credit for completion of this project but I would love to share what issues you might have doing this work and how to avoid blunders. Don't sit piers on the ground, pour the slabs. Never try to have your piers on the ground no matter how hard you think it is. It was obvious to me and wasn't the mistake I made. I was well prepared. One of the causes why the house is sagging, not just floors, because they sit on problemed soil, which can be not strong enough to support the structure. Some areas have soft ground, in others the water level can be too high below the ground. Rumors saying if the property is close to natural waters, the underground level of water is dependent on low and high tide. Back in the day there wasn't so much research and knowledge and regulations where you can build, and landscape itself is not actually eternal but changing. Nevertheless, you must have piers built on slabs, not on sand or ground. Here is how my house was built and I bet a lot of properties have the same issues. Also, someone previously tried to put a couple of fillers and they sit directly on the ground, which is kind of sand in my case. Horrible work. We were going to make it right and you should always pull the slabs or watch contractors who you hire in to do the job to make sure they do it. Do not think that by lifting up beams you will fix entire floors. In construction terminology of crawl space, you can meet both words used by people – garters and beams. They serve as support for the floor joists and run perpendicular to them. As much as they practically hold the entire weight including joists, it doesn't mean that they are the reason of sagging unleavened floors and you will fix entire problem just working on those. Also, not all floors and subfloors are designed and built the same, so this part might not be applied to your case. Generalizing, often floors start to sag simply because the entire system wasn't properly constructed. When the home is new and everything seems to be working fine, but over time it's not the same anymore when house is aging. In my case, as I could see my own and been told by experienced contractors, the span between beams is too big. That means they are located too apart from each other. Which is also a reason why joists they support 
naturally having enough of it along their length and gradually losing strength and going down with aging. Just putting extra beams across plan to lift up joist will not fix entire floor. It's a good option though if you need extra supports, but nowhere to believe it will make complete fix. That's what I tried to do first. Can't say for all of the houses, but as a matter of fact, most likely you will not be able to use just one beam, let's say 4x6 you will purchase in Lois, put it across the joist and try to get them up because the bottom of the joist is simply not on the same level. Whoever built my house in 1955 definitely didn't think that in 2021 someone will be crawling underneath the house trying to lift it up. Here is self-made beam I came up with. I measured how much am I missing from joist if I put straight garter and simply cut additional wooden pieces and attach them with the glue. Also, I added metal plates in the spots where we plan to use barrel jacks for lifting. After we tried to use this self-constructed beam and it just didn't work the way I thought, flattening all of the floors above. Some joists just didn't need that lift. I can see how putting additional beam would benefit the structure like we discussed before as an additional support, but in no case it should be considered as ultimate way to fix up floors leveling them up. The lift should be done in determined areas. Bottle jacks cannot be your permanent piers. Okay, you do two, three, do three. Mm -hmm. Don't be scared, homie. For some reason, silly me, I thought I'm just gonna use barrel jacks to lift up the floors to desired level and leave for good as permanent piers. But after first testing period of couple of days, I saw they simply sag down to previous position before lifting joists. No matter you have 6, 12 or 20 tons, the barrel jack promises you to lift up, it's not gonna hold permanently your huge and extremely heavy construction. Remember, you forcing enormous weight of the house construction components up, and your barrel jacks are pretty much just oil fluid in cylinder, what we call barrel moving the piston up by pressure. You use barrel jack just for temporary lift to set up permanent piers. Also important tip, use solid thick metal plate attached to the block you will be using on the top of the barrel jack. The weight is insane, if your plate is too thin, the lifting piston or bottle jack will start bending it. If you use cinder blocks, don't place them with flat side up. The correct way to place them is having flat surface on the sides, not on the top or the bottom. That's simply how they are used in construction and I made the rookie mistake using them incorrectly. I didn't get to the point where I was using them as a part of building piers, but I had them to put barrel jacks on so I could start messing with lifting up floors. One of them just blew up and I thought entire floor cracked and the house is just gonna fall on me. Few others I had barrel jacks set on cracked too, so be careful if you decide to use them that obviously means place them the proper way. Do not use floor jacks from regular home improvement stores. That was very disappointing and could not be predicted. I purchased those jacks in lowest for relatively cheap price compared to their function and that's exactly what they are supposed to be made for, to support sagging floors. It was actually my ultimate plan, to use floor jacks. Unfortunately, it didn't work the way I thought it should. In my house, the main beams are consisted from couple of 2x4 boards and they are not flat on the bottom where you want to put your piers. 
The jack floor got around 5 by 4 inches metal plate that's supposed to do the work. The construction of floor jack itself is so brittle and kind of shaky. The footing for jack should be perfectly solid flat to accommodate the piece without leaning. And floor jack itself is pretty much 1 inch width metal bar that pushing up mentioned metal plate and you sort of supposed to hand tighten it. Who does that? Eventually, under so much weight, that metal plate is simply bad on the sides, not holding anything. I ended up selling those jacks out of Facebook Marketplace for little for nothing. Waste of money. You will not make your floors perfect. Don't dream about it and don't rely on it too much. Remember, your main goal should be not just leveling floors, but putting piers to support existing sagging structure. And by doing that, you work your way on leveling floors where they are just too much down. I believe my contractor did great job, but the floors were nowhere to be perfect. And if you put some baseball, it will always stay in place. However, when you add all the furniture and little carpet or cowhide or whatever, you're not gonna see imperfections at all and everything will look like nice solid unit with strongly set floors. So, the proper way how to lift up floors based on work of my contractor is determining the lowest spots with laser and big level tool, moving underneath the house to pull the slabs in the spots where floors need to be lifted, and building piers there out of blocks and wood, gradually shaming, moving from spot to spot. On my next project where I need to lift floors, I will try to make a video with step-by-step -step instructions how to do this work properly. But for now, I hope this video was helpful to all DIYers. Have fun in your crawl spaces. <laughs>